Hey guys, how's it going? So today's project is one I actually didn't anticipate having to do, um, but I was walking around the gazebo kind of reassessing what we have still going on around it and what plants I still wanted to move, and I noticed a ton of hostas popping through the ground, and I've already moved a bunch of hostas. I didn't realize how many I still had left in this area, and that's gonna be today's project. I have 34 in the ground around this gazebo in this general area that I need to dig up and move to other areas of our yard. So first off, around the base of the pine trees, you might remember like some years ago, maybe two, three years ago, I planted autumn frost hostas all the way around the base, and I thought for sure those were wrecked when the pine trees were removed because that whole area was excavated. I mean, they uh, ground out the stumps and everything, but apparently Apparently nothing can keep these autumn frost hostas down because all of them but two are coming back. There's a whole bunch right there and I just didn't realize it. And then I already came in around the pondless waterfall and I removed one, two, three, four Empress Wu hostas and I still have four hostas in there that I didn't see. <laughs> How does that happen? And then also in this area right back here, we had a bad hailstorm a couple years ago and a bunch of my hostas were shredded and ruined and I dug a lot of them up and moved them back here all to the same location just to kind of recuperate. So I need to dig those as well. Now ideally I would have realized this earlier and had this project already done, but I think it's still cool enough right now. We got down to 34 last night, 37 tonight, and it's staying like it's getting warmer. This Friday is supposed to be 88. Uh, it's getting warmer during the days, but we're still having really cool nights so I think we're still gonna be okay even though these hostas have already pushed growth so let me show you around the area and where I have to dig these up and I have really no idea where I'm gonna put them in the garden but I'm sure we can squeeze them in there's always room for 34 hostas so there's the gazebo this is the flower bed where the pine trees lived and here are the autumn frost hostas they kind of start here and ring around that side we're only missing two which is nuts to me so we're missing one here and here, although I notice we're having some weeds happily take over right there. Anyway, so that's the first location. I planted right around the front side here. What are you doing, Russell? You playing with that drip tube? <laughs> it's so weird. I planted a diamond lake right here that I wanna dig. There are a couple that I don't know the varieties because they were here. There's this one here. When we moved in, that was there as well as these two here, and there's actually one right here. And then swinging around the back side of the gazebo, you can see all of them right in here. There's some water slide, autumn frost. There are four big ones that I don't know the name of because they were here when we moved in. One, two, three, four, they're beautiful though. So I wanna make sure to save those. Looks like we might have a patch of sunflowers coming up right there, better hide them from Aaron. And then here where our pondless waterfall is, there's one right here. There's an autumn frost that's actually um, planted in a piece of landscape fabric in the water. I didn't know you could do that. I learned that when Brian and Greg were here. And then there are two right back there, out of my shadow, hello. So the little ones like the water slides and the autumn frost, those will be really easy to place. I'm just gonna have to think about the Empress Woos that wanna get five to six feet wide. However, a little tip that I learned from um, people in the industry, the growing industry, those big hostas will really only get that big if they get quite a bit of water. And we always think about hostas as like a good plant for drier shade areas. Uh, and they are, they do really well, but they will never reach their max potential in size unless they get quite a bit of water. So that, I didn't know that. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna dig a bunch of plants up and go dig a bunch of new holes around the property. I think I need to go change my shoes. I have sandals on right now. I didn't really think this through. <laughs> this whole project I didn't really think through. All right, let's get started. Bag O Biotone, where are you? At one point though, there was a big root 
going through one of the, like a tree root, going through one of the root balls of the hostas, and as I pulled the hosta root ball out, the tree root came flinging out of the hole and flung dirt all over me, like down my shirt and all over my face, so who knows, I don't have a mirror out here. So anyway, got the job done, as well as a few other things. There was a Brother Stefan Clematis I had on the back side of the gazebo I'd forgot about, uh, and I did dig up a, what else? A columbine that is real pretty. I'm also gonna have to dig up this Japanese maple right there because when the pine trees and all that stuff came down, all of a sudden this whole area is sun. Um, there's also some Brunnera that looks amazing back there. I just thought, oh crumb, I'm gonna have to get those dug up as well. But the Japanese maple I think will look really good where the Venus dogwood was behind the fireplace because that's a morning sun location and afternoon shade perfect for a Japanese maple like this. I'm not gonna do that today though because I don't wanna shock these poor plants. I need to get them in the ground. So uh, at this point, we just need to run around the garden and start tucking hostas in. And here they all are. Isn't that crazy that that's a 34 hostas? I just couldn't bear to see any of them go away. I just love hostas so much. Um, and then Brother Stefan Clematis is right here which I just planted it last year. It hadn't really rooted in that much, but it's got a lot of new growth and buds on it. So I'm thinking I might even tuck that behind the chicken coop, like in between the two Zephyrine roses. Um, that way it can kind of intermingle. I think that'd be really pretty. But I gotta look up, is Clematis poisonous to chickens? I gotta, I gotta determine that first. Are Clematis poisonous to chickens? Clematis poisonous to chickens. Are Clematis vines poisonous to chickens? Gah! Are clematis spines poisonous to chickens? Are clematis vines poisonous to chickens? Oh, oh, we got close enough this time. So from what I am finding, it says that clematis is poisonous, but most animals will not eat it due to the bitter taste. I would not risk that, so we're gonna find a different fence to plant our clematis. Good to know. I also realized I have three limelight hydrangeas here and three fire lights that were around the uh, fountain area and I'm not really ready to place those anywhere else right now so I did text a friend and said hey <laughs> I've got more shrubs if you want them. So anyway I think she may come over and grab those as well as a few other perennials. So I mean I think all of these plants that we have around this area Every single one of them will have been located somewhere else or rehomed. This is actually going to an area on the west side to mirror another comb boxwood that's on one side of a pathway. It's perfect. Okay, less talking, more planting. Here we go. the ground I think they actually all look really good where they ended up so now I want to give you a tour of all those areas and then I'll give you some details on the plants at least the ones I know what variety they are so this is the last spot we ended up in today it's the one with the most consistent shade right now you can see Aaron's been pruning on a tree the pruners out oh boy but I had three autumn frost hostas left in the back of the gator. So you can see them here, here, and here. They grow about 12 inches tall, 24 inches wide, and they are zone three through nine. And I've got them in here with lamb's ear. Uh, these are the three hostas and the Japanese maple that came from behind the pond earlier. So I transplanted those this spring and they're doing fantastic. Now this spot does get some afternoon sun. So far so good. I'm thinking I may have to do some sort of trellis, like freestanding obelisk or something with a vine. Um, we'll see, just to provide a little bit of extra shade. It's such a short amount of time that they get sun though that it might be okay as long as they're getting enough water. And then I planted the Brother Stefan 
clematis right here. Let me get to the other side. It's kind of maybe a better view. Yeah, there we go. I think that it'll do great on this trellis right here. So this one has gorgeous bluish purple blooms that are huge and they bloom early summer all the way through the rest of the season. Um, they're a type that blooms on both old wood and new wood. Um, so it's the ones that we get the longest flower show from. It is a zone four through nine and it grows, oh, I don't know, about five to seven feet tall and maybe four to six feet wide or something like that. Anyway, it'll cover a good portion of this trellis. Okay, let's head to this flower bed here. This flower bed is interesting because this front side gets a surprisingly lack of sun. So you see a, quite a bit of sun right now, but as the season progresses, this locust tree leaves out and it fills in and it gets a lot more dappled in here. There's also a maple tree. Let me turn around, go slow so that it doesn't make you sick. So this is the maple tree we were just under and that helps protect this area from afternoon sun as well. So it's just an interesting spot. I can usually get away with doing some sun lovers and some shade lovers in the front here, but I stuck the hostas, a lot of them right in here because this is the north side of our house and this spot is always shaded. Uh, so let's see, I gotta remember where they all went. Benjamin came out to help me with this one and we found a bunch of worms, he was loving it. So there's one here, I planted the columbine right there. There's another hosta there, I think. So I'm not sure what variety that one is, uh, and I don't think I know what variety that one is either. I'm so helpful, aren't I? There's another one right there. I planted one right here to fill in this space where a hookah didn't come back. One autumn frost right there. Isn't the variegation gorgeous? I love it. And then another one right there. There are hostas all over in here. In fact, there's one coming up right here too. I had to be really careful because there's hostas in this entire section. There's one right here. It's just, it's a hosta filled bed and it's gorgeous. And I did plant white foxglove in here last year. Um, there's some hookahs and I planted some columbine up on that side. It's a really fun area. And then I did tuck some hostas in here as well. This is kind of my hellebore area. The snowflakes are looking absolutely beautiful right now. Look at those. Gosh, they're like giant snowdrops and I love them. But I had a little room back in here. So I planted these in here last year. And I had room to pop this one, that one, and then another one that's just starting to emerge right there. So most of the hostas I have back in here are coast to coast hostas, which grow roughly 30 to 36 inches tall and wide, I believe, but they have more of like a golden colored leaf and very bold and beautiful. And I think that the one I popped here might be a coast to coast. I'm not positive what this one is right there. It might be a wee hosta. And then this one, right here was already here when we moved in. So I'm not sure what variety that is. And then swinging around from this area, boy, that's just so open, isn't it now? All the way over here to the right. This is where more of them ended up. So we've got three autumn frost right at the base of the iris right here. The lamium is just in its prime and looking beautiful. Now this hosta right here gets massive. Like it fills up this entire area. It gets like four by four. Uh, or four feet wide, and then maybe three feet tall. It's really big. So I popped one hosta back in here, one here, and I think it'll I think it'll be fine. I think that this one has enough space. And then this area already has a bunch of hostas that do really well. So there's one here, there's another one coming up over here. The, let's see, these two were here. So I popped one there, 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 and there. <laughs> it's just gonna be totally full of hostas. Last section I planted is underneath the golden rain tree over here. So we planted a little hosta garden in here. Was it last year? Last spring? I think it might have been, but everything is looking so gorgeous. I mean, these are wee hostas right here. Aren't those beautiful? There's Hudson Bay right here. Water slide right there. Uh, this one I think is etched glass as well as the other two. So there's three that swing around the front of this tree. Uh, there are Woo La La hostas, which get really big. There's more Hudson Bay. Uh, there's a coast to coast right there. And so you can see I planted this one here, which is an unknown variety. I planted one, two, three, four autumn frosts. And then I did plant an Empress Woo right here, which I realized these salvias are gonna have to move, but I think they were gonna have to move anyway because I didn't realize how much shade this area does get. Um, and the salvias, they do okay, but I think they might do better somewhere else. And here's our clematis that we just planted. 
Sparky, let's see, this one's Sparky Purple. Gosh, they're so pretty. Astas are just one of the best shade plants ever. And a lot of ours get a good block of sun too, especially in the morning. Uh, but as long as they get the protection in the afternoon, they're typically really happy plants. Now, one nice thing about our area and hostas is that we're so dry that we don't deal with a ton of slugs. We do have them, um, but I know they're a huge problem for some of you guys. Um, I do usually come through in the spring when I start seeing a little bit of activity, slug activity, which I just saw one, first one, a couple of days ago, and I start baiting with that bug and slug, and I just do that every couple of weeks or so, um, and just as a preventative to keep them nice looking. My main uh, concern with hostas here is weather, uh, so our high winds can be very damaging to hostas as well as our freak hail storms that happen every once in a while, um, but typically doesn't happen though, and usually even if we get a strong wind storm, it'll tatter a few leaves, you remove those, and then they produce more, so it's not a huge Huge deal but they provide such a huge bulk and a beautiful texture in our flower beds and I just love them and I cannot wait until we have some more shady areas as some of our newly planted trees you know over the last few years start you know getting some size I mean a lot of our areas that are sun right now won't be forever and we'll have to slowly transition them into shadier beds but I do have a little bit more transplanting to do like I mentioned the Japanese maple and the cone boxwood over there and, and a few other things and then um, my friends are coming over this afternoon to dig out hydrangeas and some other things around the gazebo so anyway slowly but surely we will get it handled by the time the Hartley is ready to come so anyway I hope this video is helpful in some capacity maybe Maybe you're in a position where you're not sure if you can move stuff still um, and I say like if you need to move it move it just keep it nice and moist I made sure every single one of my plants has drip run to it and I did water everything in today so it should be settled in and good to go I use biotone starter fertilizer which does help it create a strong root system quickly and usually my stuff does okay um, so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one bye